What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example for transformations of functions. We gotta graph this function here. So y equals negative four, absolute value of five minus x plus seven. So notice that in this case, the parent function and the transformations are combined. And what is the parent function? Hopefully you could tell that it's the absolute value of x. We got these absolute values here. So this, got transformed here. Now another way that this question could have been asked is that they could have said if f of x equals the absolute value of x, then we would have to graph y equals negative 4 f of 5 minus x plus 7, like that. Could have been given in that general transformation format, and then that parent function is separately given. And then this could be applied to any parent function. This could be applied to x squared, 1 over x, uh, square root of x. In this case, it's applied to absolute value x. Right? So just want to make a note of that. Now, if we take the, um, the general transformation format, which is what? A, F of K bracket x minus d plus c. Let's put a y equals there actually. Okay, if we take this general transformation format and specifically apply it to the parent function absolute value x, the way it's going to look is y equals a absolute value of k bracket x minus d, uh, all within the absolute value plus c. And so, oh wow, I uh, just realized I didn't erase the transformation values from the last question. So those are not the transformation values that were up there for this. That was from the last question, forgot to erase them. So anyway, applying this to this specific parent function, it's here. And then um, what we gotta do is look at this, relate it to this, and then get those transformation values. So notice that the a value, it's obvious that it's negative four, and then notice the c value, it's obvious that it's positive seven. But notice that within the absolute value, it's not in this format here. We have a five minus x, but it's supposed to be in this format, k bracket x minus d, close bracket. So how can we take this and put it in this format? Well, what we can do is first rearrange this, so make sure that x goes in front, so we could rewrite it as negative x plus five. Five minus x, negative x plus five, those are the exact same thing. And then notice that x has to be by itself, there can't be anything attached to it, so we could factor out this negative one that's in front. And if we do that, we'd end up with x minus five in the bracket, right? All the signs would change if we factor out a negative. And so this, we can actually rewrite as y equals, negative four, absolute value, and then this would be the expression inside, uh, plus seven. And now we can take this and relate it to that. So the a value, negative four, c value is seven, like we said. Notice that the k value is gonna be negative one. And then the d value, notice it's gonna be positive five. Remember, it's always the opposite sign there, because it's x minus d, x minus five, so the d value is positive five, right? So sometimes you'll get something like this, then you'll have to rearrange it in order to get it in this format. So just be on the lookout for stuff like that, right? So we got our transformation values. What is the next step here? We got to make a table for the transform function. And so we first start with the parent table. Now, the parent table for the absolute value of x went over this. It's what? Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, like that. And then the y values are 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. All right? So that is the table for the absolute value of x. We went over that in the video when we talked about it. Basically, the parent function absolute value x, it looks like this. Okay, and then from here, what we got to do is transform this table, and the way we're going to transform it is through this mapping formula. So all the x values, we're going to divide by the k value of negative 1, which is like taking all the x values and multiplying them by negative 1. Same thing, dividing by negative 1 or multiplying by negative 1, 
gives us the same value, and I feel like this looks a lot nicer than if we had it divided by negative one. Then plus D, we got the plus five here. All of the Y values we're multiplying by negative four, and then we're gonna add the C value of seven. And so basically, what's gonna happen is all of these X values from the parent table, we gotta put through this formula. All the Y values in the parent table, we gotta put through that formula. And when we do that, we would end up with this corresponding table over here. So for example, this negative two times negative one is positive two plus five gives us seven, applying that same thing to these X values. Then these Y values transform to these, so two times negative four, which is uh, negative eight plus seven gives us negative one. Now I mentioned this before too, is that the type of point transforms. So remember with the absolute value of X, it looks like this. Notice that there's like this vertex at this zero and zero. And this point zero and zero got transformed to this point, five and seven. So we know that on this transform function, five and seven is going to be the vertex when we graph it. Just knowing that information is gonna help the graph. And then I've also mentioned in previous examples, you can test your new table. So you can plug in some of these X values here, and then you should get the corresponding, um, corresponding Y value. So if we pl plug in like four for this X, we got four, or sorry, five minus four, which is one. Absolute value one is one, times negative four is negative four, plus seven gives us three. We could try seven, five minus seven is negative two. Absolute value of negative two is positive two. Times negative four is negative eight, plus seven gives us negative one. Right, so you can do that test, be pretty confident that the table is correct, that there wasn't any mistakes. All the X values are positive, and then all of the Y values is kind of a mix, so. Let's make it like this. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we'll have negative one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, so five and seven, that is the vertex. We'll actually start with that point. One, two, three, four, five, and seven. That's like up here. And then we'll have six and three which is like over here. And then we'll have four and three, which would be like here. This is not necessarily to scale here. Three and negative one. And then we'll have a seven and negative one, which is down here. And so when we attach these points, should look something like that. Perhaps not the best graph, but if you made it on graph paper, you should get something similar. Right, so that is the final graph of this. And as I mentioned before, you can actually test these transformations just with a rough kind of um, shift of that parent function. So notice we got this absolute value. You know what? Let me actually do it at the bottom here. So let's write these uh, transformation values. We got a negative four, k negative one, D value of positive five, and then a C value of positive seven. So what do all these mean? Well, negative four, there's a reflection. If the A value is negative, there's a reflection in the X axis. Vertically stretched by four. If K is negative one, there's just a reflection in the Y axis, which actually doesn't affect the graph, and I'll mention why in a sec. And then a D value of positive five means it goes five to the right. C value of positive seven means it goes seven up. So what we can do is we can take that parent function, absolute value of X, and we can actually go through these transformations. And I'm actually gonna start with the K value of negative one first. Notice that here, what does a K value negative one do? Reflects in the Y axis? Well, notice here, if we reflect it in the Y axis, we're gonna get the exact same graph because the absolute value of X is an even function, it's symmetrical. So reflection in the Y axis is not gonna change it. And you can see that algebraically because this is the parent function, absolute value X. 
Well, if we add a negative 1k value, notice that neg anything negative in the absolute value is going to turn into a positive. So we have a negative x here. Well, that's just going to turn into absolute value of positive x, and we'd end up right here. So any negative k values, the graph would be the exact same if it was the corresponding positive k value. So for example, we took this graph and we rewrote it as negative 4, uh, negative x minus 5, plus 7. Well, this graph would be the exact same as if it was just x minus 5, plus 7. These two graphs are the exact same thing. We could take out that negative k value. If you graph both of these on Desmos, you'd get the exact same thing. And then, not only just a negative one, but let's say this was like uh, a negative two here. Well, if we put positive two here, both of these would be the same graph. So a k being negative for an absolute value function, remember this is only for this parent function, not for the other parent function. For um, x squared, it works like this as well, but for the others it doesn't. But for the absolute value of x, a negative k value doesn't really uh, change the graph. However, if you do get a negative k value, make sure you still state that transformation because uh, you may lose marks if you don't. Right, so let's go through these transformations. We can ignore this one. We said it's not gonna affect the graph. Reflection in the x-axis, so it's gonna look like this. Then we're vertically stretching it by four, so it's gonna look like that. Then we're gonna go five to the right, seven up, so it's gonna be like that, what we got over here. Right, so again, you can go through these roughly and then, uh, and then get a rough graph. Make sure that you have the same shape in the graph that you made. And then the domain and range, if they ask for it, notice the domain here, x, e, r. x could be anything, there's no restriction on x. Or an in interval notation, it could go from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, though, is restricted. Notice the y values have to be less than or equal to 7. Right? 7 is the max point right there for the y values. So the y values can go from negative infinity, this keeps going on to negative infinity, to positive 7. So y can be an element from negative infinity to positive 7, inclusive of that. Right? So this graph here, transformations, domain, and range.